I got, I'll start by bringing with a with a shtikel chesidus, a little chazor from my mind a little bit. The Rebbe, our Rebbe, over the course of the Nesias, kocht, I don't know how you say kocht in English without kocking the koch, in certain maimorim of the Friedrich Rebbe especially, certain maimorim of the Friedrich Rebbe, that the Rebbe had sich in dem Stagger angelegt. And the Rebbe, some of these maimorim, the Rebbe would repeat many times. The, of course, the best example of that would be Bossi Lagani. How many times did the Rebbe say Bossi Lagani? But there were certain sugim by modem in Bechad Rebbe, certain Mamad Rebbe liked, that he kocht in them. Now, if you, if you know how. My mother Hasid, I'll tell you, I heard this from my father in law, Allah Shalom, Rebbe Moshe, Nemenov. You're getting in without a Shalom Aleichem, Last night I was in Florida, I talked about Shimon Lazarov and Zalm bin Shazar. Ha. Um, so my shver told me that the Friedrich Rebbe left Russia Isru Chag of Simchas Teda Tafesh Peches. He left Russia the day after Simchas Teda in the year 1927. And um, there's the Sichas, the Sichas that are printed from that Simchas Teda, Gvaldek Sichas, very powerful Sichas. But Reb Nissen was, I think he was still a Bacher. But Reb Nissen was considered from the Cheshuvim. Even then, he was a very special person. And he was very close to Friedrich Rebbe Tamshtak Lieb Gahat. So he was a Mashgiach or he was a Mashpi. I don't know exactly what his official role was. But um, I got that sutra. He, he could ask things from the Friedrich Rebbe that somebody else couldn't ask. So he went into the Friedrich Rebbe, Matasim Chasteyed, and he said, The Rebbe is leaving tomorrow. Maybe the Rebbe could leave the Maimir. The Maimir, the Rebbe said, Sim Chasteyed. The Rebbe, fought, the Rebbe was leaving Russia. And for many of the Chassidim and the Nasha was the last time they saw the Rebbe. Mamesh, Kibshute. So Rebbe Nissen asked if the Rebbe could leave the Maimed. The Friedrich Rebbe could leave the Maimed. So the Rebbe said he could. And he took out a number of Bichlach. I don't know how a person who's traveling the next morning is able to do this. He took out a number of Bichlach that says, Dishribin Echsidis, Mesama from his father. And he told Rebbe Nissen, to copy from this piece to this piece, from this piece to this piece, and this piece to this piece, and then they should build the Maimed out of it. Meaning the Maimed of the Rebbe Ayat, the Friedrich Rebbe's Maimed was the Rubei Kekulei, or Rubei, was words from a Maimed from the Rebbe Ashab, a piece from here, and a piece, reconstructed to create a new Maimed. And then the Rebbe added, the Rebbe added Oishe Sahibo, the Friedrich Rebbe made it into a new Maimed by adding a beginning and an end. I don't know exactly how much he added. So Rebbe Nissen took a Bacher, and he gave him the copy of the Bichlach. The night, Matzah Simchas Teh, the Tafresh Pechas, the Rebbe was leaving the next day. So he copied from this Bichl and from this Bichl, and they reconstructed the Maimah. When the Rebbe left, the Chassidim in Russia had the Maimah that the Rebbe said Simchas Teh, which means that it. The Rebbe said once that Bichlach Simchas Teh was not a lot of Maimahim because uh, it wasn't exactly the atmosphere for a Maimah. And then the Friedrich Rebbe asked Rebbe Nissen who did the work, who prepared it. So Rebbe Nissen told the Friedrich Rebbe which Bachar he gave the job to. And the Friedrich Rebbe says, good, I'm happy you gave it to him and not to somebody else. That's the Lushen. Not everybody has to know how a Maimed is constructed. I mean, the Friedrich Rebbe said a Maimed, it's his Maimed. But the words are actually words from earlier Rebbeim, from the Rebbe Rashab, that he, he created a new Maimed using their Oisius. The, there's a Yid, a young man, a Gon. His name is Yenis and Reinitz. He lives in New Haven. He made a Rishima as a Bachayet, 35 years ago, of every single Maimah the Friedrich Rebbe where it comes from. Every single Maimah the Friedrich Rebbe where it comes from. From the Rebbe Rashab. I think all Maimah the Friedrich Rebbe, at least 90%, 95%, 98% are his father's Maimodim. And there's different styles. Sometimes the Friedrich copies his father's Maimah word for word and adds nothing. Kipshute. Sometimes you have short additions, clean as achen, sugalake. But sometimes you have on each line of the Rebbe Rashab, the Friedrich Rebbe writes a page. And there are my modern from the earlier years, from the page that they printed recently, where you have the Maimir that the Friedrich Rebbe copied from his father and we're missing the notes. 
Because the Friedrich Rebbe used to copy his father. He had somebody copy his father's Maimit, and then he would write notes on it. So we have the copy, but we don't have the notes. So when you look at the Maimarim, you see, in the certain, I think, Pebei is the Tisha, the Long Hemshech. So in the beginning, you see what the Friedrich Rebbe is adding to his father. And towards the end of the Hemshech, you just have the Rebbe Rashab's own words. Because we, it's not that he didn't write Ha'ores and, 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 and his office. We push it with the Ksav, didn't reach us. It was in a separate Machberes. It was a separate... Uh, so the Marim of the Friedrich Rebbe are built on the Marim of his father, but he changes them. Now, uh, in, 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 changes in Haskole is a bazunde zeit, a bazunde ringen. The, the changes that the Friedrich Rebbe makes to his father's Marim in terms of Eon and Limud is a parsha. The Marim of the Friedrich Rebbe are different than the Rebbe Rashab's Marim. The, the, the really deep scholarly Maimorim are very Havshatadik, more than the Rebbe Rashabs. It's based on his father's Maimorim. But the Avoida, what the Friedrich Rebbe takes his father's Maimorim and he brings out the Avoida, the, the heart of the Maimir. And of course, when he speaks about the heart of the Maimorim, there's the Kolos the Kenyan, the Rebbe speaks only Avoida, Tfilo, Mesir Snefesh, Eskafia. But it's specifically true when the Avoida is reflecting the world that Rebbe was living in. The Friedrich Rebbe in his Maimorim is saying Torah, but the Torah is reflecting the Maimed Amatsev. The Friedrich like, you know, Rebbe that we have, the Friedrich Rebbe said that Maimed, but he didn't call it Vata Tetzave. He called it Vakibal Yehudim. Why? Because in the times of the Friedrich Rebbe, this Maimed about his Kashras was defined by Mesir Nefesh. From the Rebbe Rashab, the same Maimed, from Tafresh Ayin Tess, is Kisisa. Kisisa Reish Meisal, the same Maimer. Each Rebbe takes the Maimer and applies it to his door, and that's the real Limud. You know, if you learn a Maimer, you're not trying to see. So how many words are the Friedrich Rebbe's original? How many words are his father's? That's a game that people play that are very smart and they have no seichel, you know. <laughs> when you're learning a Maimer from a Rebbe, based on a Maimer from a Rebbe, you see what this Rebbe is saying that's negated to his door. And you see this in the Maimer of the Friedrich Rebbe a lot. Where the Maimorim have so much heart because of the conditions under which the Friedrich Rebbe was saying and writing these Maimorim. So when our Rebbe chazes his Shver as Maimorim, when the Friedrich Rebbe chazes the Maimorim for the Rebbe Rasha, the Friedrich Rebbe, so the earlier years it's a bit different. It says the Erech, the Tzenyor, the Erech, the Fufzenyor, the Erech, But even then, but certain later years, the Rebbe always finds those pieces that are the Friedrich Rebbe's and not the Rebbe Rasha's. And there are the, the hats, the avoid. The, the Rebbe will pick one word out of a mime from the Friedrich Rebbe and make something out of it. You know, the, in the, in the Moshal of Malach Basada, the Friedrich Rebbe adds one word. Yechelim v'rashoim. The Friedrich Rebbe copies in the end of Anila Dei Tavshin. It's printed word for word the Moshal of Malach Basada from the Lukut Tere. And he adds one word. The Rebbe spent hours studying that one word. The Alter Rebbe writes Yechelim, they're, they're able. And a shoyim means they're allowed. So the Rebbe made, in other words, the Rebbe, to say he found it's foolish, the Rebbe is gekocht in the oisius harav that are the Rebbe's oisius, the Friedrich Rebbe's oisius. So the Maimorim of the Rebbe that are based on the Maimorim of the Friedrich Rebbe, they're a different style. Sometimes he pushes the pizza of the Maimorim the way it is. And sometimes he takes a piece of the Maimorim that from a Haskalah perspective is not such a ikir. But from a life, from an avoider perspective, an avoider in terms of avoider Hashem bechlau, an avoider Hashem in terms of the time, besir nefesh, and this is how he builds. This is what the Rebbe is doing. He's focusing on the words of the Friedrich Rebbe that are the Friedrich Rebbe, not the Rebbe Rashabs, because because he's speaking to the inyanim of the Friedrich. The inyanim besir nefesh. So, like I said to you before, there are certain maimorim of echad Rebbe kachzach stark. Just, I think this basically too. I'm not such a maven in, in the Maimorim of the Friedrich Rebbe. God knows I'm not. I mean, I know the Maimorim because when the Rebbe's Maim, I have to look where it comes from. That's really hard. The Friedrich, as a kid, I learned the Friedrich as Maimorim. But I'm not a maven Friedrich as Maimorim. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. But there's two suga Maimorim from the Friedrich Rebbe, especially. One is the Derushe Chasane. When the Rebbe got married, the Friedrich Rebbe said six Maimorim. <coughs> the Rebbe repeated those six Maimorim Be'erech 30 times That means on average He said each Maimor five times But L'chadeidi said only once He would repeat the same Maimor over and over again How many Asher Bodas are there? How many Maimorim do you have? 
Or Amar Abayish Ma'idik Siv Tzitkes Bezayin Yisrael. It's based on one of the Ma'amarim that the Friedik and Rebbe said during the Rebbe Shev Brachas, and the Rebbe repeated it, as, and every time it was different. It's a Gikor in the Ma'amarim of the Rush, the Rebbe's Ma'amarim, the Rush Echasane. The Rebbe had a very big Koch. And another example of that is Ma'amarim of Yid Beis Tamas. So the the, the Friedik and Rebbe was arrested in Tafresh Pezayin, 1927. And um, during the week that he was liberated, he said Hasidus many times, maybe five times. Last night I was in Florida, so I talked about Aramay Minamei Tzar Karasi Ko, which uh, the Rebbe said in jail. On Thursday, Lamed Sivan, Aleph Tresh Chedish Tamos, the Friedrich Rebbe said, Aramay Mer Inch Balerika Prison, which begins with the word Minamei Tzar Karasi Ko. You read the first ten lines and your heart comes out. He's you could hear his pain. The Fidik Rebbe is using Psukim. The whole thing is Psukim. But the pain and the Kol Goyim, so you have to read it. It's impossible to, unless you repeat words with the Rebbe precisely, which I cannot do. But the Maimah begins, when the he doesn't quote the second half of the Pasuk. The Anani Vamech Avko is missing. He just, when the Maimah the Fidik Rebbe wrote, said a Maimah and wrote a Maimah which described his Maimah the Matzav as it was. He was Min and then he was liberated, and uh, there's a bunch of maimon. They said in a week, there's a maimer gefen mi mitzrayim tasia. There's two maimon in Baruch Hagoymel. There's a maimer havaya liba ezra even yada besayna, and then there's a maimer suyu dechem kodesh ovarcha savaya. In one week, the Fidik Rebbe said this all those times, and the Rebbe, in his Nasiyas, repeated these Maimodim come upon him. But after that, the Fidik Rebbe, every year, Bish Thomas had a Maimish, at least one, sometimes two. The Fidik for those who are not aware, in Tafshin Hay, the Fidik Rebbe had a stroke. And after that stroke, he stopped writing and saying original Chesidus. The Maimodim from Tafshin Vov, from 1946 on, are the same Maimodim, word for word, from earlier years. He didn't write and say original Chesidus. So you have about 18 Yud Beis Tammuz, 18 years. And every Yud Beis Tammuz, at least one, sometimes two Maimodim. And there were certain ones that Rebbe them get kocht. I'll give you an example. <laughs> you, you recognize this. Nasata Lerayecha, Neis Lehis, Neis Lehis, Rebbe Kei Shetzel. The Rebbe said five Maimorim, but this is the Maschal. Five. Um, the the, the Maimorim that I want to talk about is Hasom Navsheinu Bachayim, Leinosa Lameit Raglenu. There's three Maimorim from the Rebbe. Hasom Navsheinu Bachayim, Leinosa Lameit Raglenu. And there are others. In other words, it's not like the Rebbe... And then, of course, I saw the Shiyoshim, Tafesh Beitas, Tafesh Beitas, the Rebbe Rayat. So first, the first anniversary of the Beis Tammuz, the Fidik Rebbe sent out a short Maimir, I saw the Shiyoshim, Beis Kibbeteiro. And in Tafesh Membeis, the Rebbe said three times the same Maimir, same Maimir, three times the Maimir, I saw the Shiyoshim, Beis Kibbeteiro. So there are certain Maimor, but the Fidik Rebbe, and the Rebbe said, and the Rebbe doesn't need our job is to understand the Maimir and maybe to understand why by the Rebbe this Maimir has a certain Cheshivas but uh, this is the Metzies Advarim so I'm, I'm not going to make I will chazen pashta vort Chesidus I'm not going to make a long drosha but it's a Chesidus of Abrengen it's a Pashtav Rankum and Elam so I'm, I'm, I'm going to say a shtikel vort from this Maimir and there's a Mugadika Maimir which I learned this year because of some troublemaker who's here someplace so the Fir de Grebe has a Poshet Akasha. On the Shama is called Chai Be'etzim. On the Shama is living. The Shama is alive. So why do you say Hasom Nafshein Ubachayim? They text in the Shama, which is already living, and he puts it into life. Hasom Nafshein with the Abish who takes the Nishama and he gives the Nishama life. If the Nishama is already living, why do you have to have life? To the nisham, and of course the answer is because v'leinosan lamoit raglenu, and he teaches a person is most vulnerable in his extremities. A person is most vulnerable in his weakest places. Right, the fingers, the toes, regal is the bottom of the person. If a person's not one hundred percent healthy, you will see illnesses in the secondary parts. Where is a person most likely to get hurt, to stumble, to fall when it comes to Yadam of Regal? The, the higher parts of the person 
are, are closer to the center of the person, so they're more protected, they're more fortified. And that's what the Pasuk is saying. The aim is to add life to a living nefesh so that the regal, on the lowest level, there shouldn't be lamait. And the English said that lamait is translated to slip, that the foot shouldn't slip. And then my mother, the Rebbe, has many different words. He connects lamait to the, it's almost the same shade as hatoya, to sl- go off the correct path. So when the Fidik Rebbe has this mimer, it's, it's a long mimer based on a mimer from the Rebbe Rashab. But the OCS that of the Fidik Rebbe's own, he quotes a Sipanu. That the Sipanu says on this Pasuk, that the Abishta adds to Teva something which is higher than Teva. The Abishta adds to Teva something which is higher than Teva. That's what he so explains the puzzle. The Abishta adds to the person something which is higher than Teva, and therefore the And the Fidika builds his mimer on this. And the, the Nakuda that he brings out is, if I understand it correctly, that even the Neshama has a Teva. The Nefshal Kis, the Neshama has a Teva, the Neshama has a nature. Because Lachaira, a nature is a limitation. A Teva is a Klipa, is a limitation. And limitations come from Klipa. Nevertheless, even the Neshama has a Teva. The Neshama has a, a, te- has a limitation. He doesn't explain what the limitation of the Neshama is. He simply says that the Neshama has a limitation. In one of my modern the Rebbe, the Rebbe says the limitation of the Neshama is if, <laughs> if you're Nebuch in Madregas Tzadik, that's the Neshama operating according to its Teva, that's the... That's the no good. The neshama, a person has never did navet. Is a tzaddik? Is the rachmanus of him vavos? Because he hasn't gone higher than his tava. He hasn't done the inyan that they bring from the zoyar that Mashiach is going to teach tzaddikim how to do tshuva. What's higher than tava? Inyan at tshuva. So the the, the husband. These are my own words now. What I'm saying it doesn't say in the mind. These oisias. You haven't tanya. You haven't tanya tava a lot in tanya. In a lot of places in Teva, the title used the word Teva to speak about the Nefsha Bahamas. But in Pedic Yutes, the word Teva is used for the Neshama. Now, the Rebbe writes, Viteva Zeh, in Pedic Yutes, 19. Viteva Zeh, Hashem Amusha Lachol Dova, Shein Yavachin Samadas, which means the use of the word Teva over here means something that you can't explain. All over the Tanya, when you talk about Teva, you can explain what Teva means. Teva means lim- the Behem is limited. But when you're speaking about the Neshama, the Nefsha Lakis, and you use the word Teva, says the Alter Rebbe, Teva Zeh, the use of the word Teva here in Pedicates, you cannot explain because you're talking about the Neshama. What's the Teva of the Neshama? The Teva of the Neshama is it wants to give itself away to the Ebishter and it loses itself completely. In other words, the King, Vitei Pasek, Nu, Neir Hashem Nishma Sodom. And in Tanya, Neir Hashem doesn't mean the Keli. Neir Hashem means the Esh. Usually in Tanya, Neir goes on the Keli. But in Tanya, Neir goes on the Esh. The fire of a Yiddish and Ishama wants to run back to the Abish and lose itself to the Abish completely. That's the Teva of the Nishama. Now, what could possibly be higher than that? Again, I, I'm being very clear. These, what I am saying now doesn't say in the Maimed. It's, it's Asius of Hezbed. The, the, the point is in the Maimed that Hasam Nafshen Bachai means the Nishama has a Teva and you have to bring the Teva to a Madrega, the Nishama which is higher than Madrega of Teva. So I was thinking that. Uh, when you speak about a yid being made a nefesh kiddush Hashem, and you call it a teva, and this this this, this, this for this in my modem, in the Rebbe's my from Purim from Tashin Yud Gimel and other places, the Rebbe Rashab holds that when a yid is made a nefesh from the madrig of Yechida, there's no pchida. You don't have a choice. The lashon in Tanya is ef shali is beifanacher. So a yid's neshama Yechida should be nefesh is revealed. A yid is made a nefesh. But it's his teva, meaning the yid doesn't have a breda. This is a lekuta sikh, it's chelik yitess, pashas nitzavim, where the Rebbe basically argues with the Rebbe Rashab. The Rebbe Rashab writes that Bechira is only in the koiches. In Yechidah, there's no Bechira. When Yechidah Shabbat Nefesh is revealed, you have no Bechira. And the Rebbe, in a very, very adele way, says, but you have to say it is Bechira, even in the end. And this is the Havona that I'm suggesting. That the teva of the Nishama is that you may say, but there's no Bechira. Higher than that is that is in your Mesiris Nefesh and it's higher than Teva. So, um, and if you wanted to connect it to something which is close to us, that's the two Madregis that you have in the Vyata Tetzaveh. 
Right? The lower Madei Gemata Tetzave is Mesiris Nefesh. But Mesiris Nefesh is limited in its being infinite. It's Mugde Begeder Apshitas. The higher Madei of Mesiris Nefesh is so unlimited that it can even operate in the realm of things that are finite, that are limited. That's the way the Maimon explains it. And that's the Pshat in the Pasuk. Hasom Mavsheinu Bachayim. The Nisham is living. And the Nisham is Teva that's ready for Mesiris Nefesh. And you have to add to the Nisham more life that the, the, the Madrega of the Neshama, which is Yechida, should have something which is even higher than what it has Beteva, so that we shouldn't slip, we shouldn't fall in, in the lowest ebb, in the lowest Madrega, in the lowest end of the Neshama. This is a Toichen, a Toichen from the from the Rebbe. And this is, like I said before, this is Nege, this is the Vata Tetzave, really. In our generation, we don't have Mesir Nefesh Mesada Teva. In the Friedrich Rebbe's generation, there was Mesir Nefesh Mesada Teva. And that's why you have in the Vata Tetzave, the Rebbe brings, that Yidin lived in, in, in those countries, and they stood in a state of Mesir Nefesh for tens of years, and they stood in a state of Mesir Nefesh for tens of years, and the way they raised their children, and the way they raised their children, in other words, the Mesir Nefesh Rush Sayyidin wasn't just Yidin, who were raised before the revolution, and they went to yeshivas, and they knew what Tayyid Ravida was, and they were Mesa Nefesh to be Elach. They raised their children and their grandchildren to follow in these ways. And the Rebbe says, they came to the West, and the Rebbe's Lashon is Ein Rayim Eslam Kol Kach, Inyan Mesiris Nefesh. You don't see so much. And the Rebbe asks why, and this is basically what he says, because the Mesiris Nefesh was Neis of Akev Seklum, was the Teva of the Neshama. It broke what they were as people. And the, the higher Madrege, and this is the Pshat in the Pesach, the Neshama needs a, the, the, even the Yechid Sheba Nefesh needs to have something which is not based on the Teva of the Neshama, it's based on the Bechira. So that they can use it even for for little, little things. And the, we're not anywhere near the Madrege, the generation before us, but the fact of the matter is this is, this is our test. This is the world in which we live. Um... Yud Beis Tammuz is a Yom Tov which is actually to Mesiris Nefesh. It's so easy to talk about it. <laughs> it's so easy to talk about Mesiris Nefesh. But uh, Mesiris Nefesh is not a conversation. Mesiris Nefesh is a, is a Ninyan Pnimi. It's, it's a serious thing. And uh, in our world, the Mesiris Nefesh doesn't show itself in extreme things. The Mesiris Nefesh shows itself in tiny things. And that Mesiris Nefesh because it's in tiny things, it's very, very difficult to motivate. It's very difficult to draw koyach. And that's why sometimes it's said that there's even a harder in of Mesiris Nefesh. But this, this, is, uh, this is our connection to Yerbeis Tammuz. It's a connection to the Rabbeim. I'll just finish with a story, a word, that the uh, Bechol Zelikson, so as long as it's stark, made a biography for his father, which is called the uh, Teldus of Avraham Arefe. He printed it only once. It's a collector's item. Uh, it would be nice if it was reprinted. Mestami can get it at Hebrew books at this point. But he, when he published the Sefer, he prepared the Sikhid that the Rebbe spoke by his father's Kabbalah upon him. Dr. Zalgson got married, Hanukkah Tavshin Yud Beis, the first Hanukkah of the Nesiyah, so before the second Yud Shvat. <coughs> and the Der Chagav, the story is he brings it in his biography. Dr. Zalgson did not have a beard when he got married. Yeah. And the Rebbe, when he was Masad the Kedushin, had two conditions aboard with a shaitl. I'm sure you've heard these things. That you had the boy had to agree to wear a beard and the girl had to uh, agree not, not to cover her hair. A shaitl. The Rebbe wanted a shaitl. The Rebbe didn't mind that the shaitl was pretty. He didn't want tichlach. He didn't want hats. He wanted girls to wear a shaitlach. Why? Because teir al areif to daber. The Rebbe is thinking about the whole Jewish world and the Rebbe feels and felt, felt and feels that a shaitl is more realistic for more women to, to cover their hair. And Dr. Zalx didn't have a beard. So the Rebbe wanted to be inside the Gedushin. He's mishpoch, he's related somehow to the Rabbeim. And Dr. Zalx and Michal was a, a holy... I heard that the Rebbe called him a tzaddik nister. But that's what I heard, the Rebbe called him a tzaddik nister. But he had this problem, so he asked the Shmuel that it's a shalaf and a nerder. By touching the base, the Rebbe had done Siddiq Gedushin for quite a few bachrim, and those were the two conditions I brought with a shaitl. So the Shmuel said to the Rebbe, "Does not touch nish the Rebbe, also Talmud in the yeshiva. The touch the Rebbe also mishpocha. He's making this Siddiq Gedushin as family, and it was the right answer because that's what the Rebbe wanted to do. And the Rebbe went to the to the chasaneh. 
The say there was in those days, you can read this in the Sefer in Makadish Yisrael, was the Chosun would sit by the Kabbalah's Ponim and the Rebbe would speak a Sikha. After the first Sikha, the Chosun would get up and go to the Badekin and the Rebbe would sit with the Chavre and speak a second Sikha. And the Rebbe would speak until the Chosun was standing under the Chuppah. So the Chosun would go and do the Badekin, then he would make the preparations, go into whatever room there was. It was not in 770, it was in a hall. And uh, when the chosm was under the chuppah, then the Rebbe would stop the fabreng and then he would go to the to the kedusha. So, like, so the sikhs are long; it's a lot. And um, it's a, it's a Hanukkah sikh. It's a sikh about Mesiris Nefesh. It's a very it's printed now in the Sefer of the Sikh as Chayel Klamid, but he printed it. He got the Rebbe to magir the sikh. It's a schus shen kamayu. The Rebbe to magir. It's a long sikh. At the end of the sikh, you have a little note, several notes. The Tzad HaKala, Dr. Zolikson's Mishpacha, his wife's Mishpacha, were from, from German Jews, from Yekesh And um, there were several Rabbonim who came to the Chasana, and they were sitting near the Rebbe. They talked, one of them told the Rebbe that he doesn't learn Chesidus because he's not only Isaac and Nis, he's not Isaac and Nisti, he's only Isaac and Nigla. Now, I, I'm not going to quote it correctly, but the Toichen of the minor was, if you don't learn it, it's Nisti, if you'll learn it, it'll be Nigla. Something like that. <laughs> but uh, one of them asked the Rebbe a very powerful question. He asked the Rebbe, why is the Rebbe talking so much about Mesiris Nefesh? And I, I'm assuming that the spirit of that question was it was six years after the war. It, it wasn't like we needed a reminder. So the Rebbe answered him, the Rebbe the Shver Gezok does that America does not even have Mesiris Nefesh. The Fidik Rebbe said that in America you have to talk about Mesiris Nefesh. So simple, Loi Pidish. That's the whole word. But you have this in Tanya. In Tanya, Pidik Chav Hey. Now the Pidik Chav is about Mesiris Nefesh, as we know, right? And I'm sure you're aware that when the Rebbe got married, Rebbe Levik, the Rebbe's father, wrote the Rebbe a letter that in the day of his chasen he should learn Tanya as Pidik Chav Sefer Shabbat and Pidik Chav Hey, be Kavana Aveloi be Ion. <laughs> yeah. Learn the Pedic with your heart and not with your mind. The Chof Hei is the Pedic of Mesiris Nefesh. At the end of the Pedic, you have after the two dots why Meshar Rabbeinu gave the mitzvah of Shema Yisrael, Yidin going into Eretz Yisrael. Now, the Rebbe asks the question Krishma is Mesiris Nefesh. Yidin are going to Eretz Yisrael, Halipachta Chameracham, Yidin are the Shema Kola Amim. Yidin are going to Eretz Yisrael, they're going to be in the mind of the Matzev where they're going to be safe and they're going to be secure and they're not going to have to have Mesiris Nefesh. So, why? Is Moshe Rabbeinu teaching Yidna about Mesiris Nefesh or the Bata going to Eretz Yisrael and Eretz Yisrael they're not going to need the Mesiris Nefesh and the Alter Rebbe answer is when you have Mesiris Nefesh you don't got to talk about it when you don't have Mesiris Nefesh you must talk about it because talking about the Mesiris Nefesh motivates the day to day life of a Yid and that's L'chayda our connection to Yid Beis Thomas okay L'chaim 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 that's what he said. You have to look inside. You look at the but I do is the initial landing, but as I need. He told the rabbi, he doesn't know see this, but I learned learn nigla and nishnista. So the rabbi told him, I'll do lenders and nishas and nista.